New this morning, police in northern Minnesota are sorting out details of a shooting and a dead body found in a burned out house. It's playing out about 10 miles west of Bemidji. Police got a call just after midnight yesterday from a man reporting gunshot wounds and a house fire. Beltrami County deputies found the house in flames and a man in a nearby outbuilding who had been shot several times. He was rushed to the Bemidji Hospital, but his condition and name are not being released. After the fire was put out, firefighters found a body in the rubble of the home. A medical examiner is now trying to make an identification of that person. Also new this morning, a North Dakota man is hurt and facing DUI charges after a wild crash along I-94. The highway patrol says he was westbound near Jamestown yesterday afternoon when he crossed the highway median in front of an oncoming tra in front of oncoming traffic, drove into the ditch, hit a ridge and then went airborne and then drove through a fence before finally coming to a stop in a slough. 30 year old Will Gullickson of McKinsey, North Dakota, was treated for minor injuries before being taken to the Stutzman County Jail. The Fargo Dome parking lot is going to be packed again today for day two of coronavirus mass testing. Cars lined up yesterday for the second effort in just over a week. Testing is open to anyone who has been working through the pandemic and for those who could have had close contact with a positive case. Mayor Tim Mahoney says the number of positive cases is not doubling in North Dakota like in many other places in the country. So the main goal now for the city leader is to track cases as restrictions for bars, gyms and restaurants are easy. Day two of the mass testing will go from one this afternoon to 530 this evening. Meanwhile, North Dakota health officials are reporting another COVID-19 death, bringing the total to 25. The victim was a Cass County man in his 90s who had underlying health conditions. Another 38 positive cases are also reported, with 33 of those in Cass County. North Dakota's total positive case count now 1,191. In Minnesota, there are 24 more deaths linked to the coronavirus. It's the fourth straight day with more than 20 deaths reported. The death toll now 419, and there are 435 more positive cases reported, bringing the state's total to 6,663. It's now 10 minutes before the top of the hour. Let's get a check of that forecast, and it's going to be cooler than what we've been used to today, Lisa. Yeah, much cooler and add to that increasing clouds and rain and just kind of gloomy weather. It's going to be a little tough the next couple of days. So this morning, if you're enjoying that sunrise and some places are, take it in while you can before the clouds and rain take over. Grand Forks, one of those places where we're getting to see the sun, but you can also see those clouds taking over in that area on our home of economy sky cam and around the region. Fargo is enjoying a beautiful sunrise, 36 degrees. Again, a little more cloudy in Grand Forks at 35 Fergus Falls, Bemidji, the east, that's where we're more likely to hold on to the sun longer. We're into the 30s, but check out Bemidji's temperature down to 32. And our eastern viewing area is one of those spots that's seeing uh, temperatures around freezing. Devil's Lake, the clouds definitely have moved in and even some rain or maybe even a few flakes mixed in with that too. Mainly just rain here we're looking at today. And you can see the rain is more substantial down in Stutzman County, lifting northeastward into Foster. And that will continue to move its way a little farther east as it heads northward here so we're looking at those showers impacting you in jamestown this morning and checking out your winds not too strong we've got wind speeds that are about 5 to 15 miles per hour that are out of the east turning a little southeasterly here as we're starting off our morning those temperatures yet again looking to be warmer west cooler to the east fargo's at 36 and notice our temperatures this afternoon very little warming happening out west because that's where we have the clouds first, the rain first, too. We just don't get that sun or opportunity to warm up at all. And the cooler air taking over there first in general, too. Over to the east, it might be a little milder, but still only 50s today. And there will be some spots up in the northeast where we're more likely to see dry weather for the vast majority of the day because it's going to take its time to spread in. But eventually it will impact you, too, here. And looking at our total precipitation, this is over the next two days. This is through Tuesday at 10 o'clock, as you see on our time clock there. We've got the potential for several rounds of this to impact us and bring us that chance for an inch of rain or so in the southern end of the valley. Northern end, 
less than a half inch of rain happening there. Great for the flowers. This is our photo today. Thanks, Christy, for sharing it. But if you have some early blooms, if you've planted some things early, definitely want to take measures to protect them. We've got some overnight lows this week, even after we clear out the, the gloom here to start off the week, that will be close to freezing or even below freezing. So I want to make sure you're paying attention throughout the week. But other than that, we get to dry things out for the second half of the week. Sounds good. Thank you, Lisa. In our consumer alert this morning, if you're planning a Costco run today, don't forget that face mask. The warehouse retailer's new guidelines kick in today, and they require a guest to wear a mask inside the store, just like employees already are. The new guidelines do not apply to children under the age of two or to people who can't wear a mask because of a medical condition. And the same now goes for Menards. Starting today, the company is requiring shoppers to wear a face mask, and it's updating store hours to allow for more cleaning time. Plus, Menards no longer is letting pets or children under the age of 16 into their stores. Just one day after reopening for business, a Fargo barber shop is shutting down again after an employee who worked on Friday tested positive for COVID-19. Skill Cuts posted on social media yesterday that they will remain closed as they await results for the rest of their staff. The post says that Fargo Cast Public Health has been or will be in contact with the clients who were in contact with that barber. Valley News Live spoke with the owner ahead of Friday's reopening and said that they planned on spacing out guests and taking extra safety precautions. According to Mental Health America, 44 million adults in the U.S. alone and 2 million children have or are facing mental illnesses. It can be hard to open up when you're struggling. And the Valley Today's Abby Furchner is live with the experts this morning, learning more about how we can get support or support each other. Good morning, Abby. Yeah, good morning, Jordan. I'm here with Sherry with the Village Family Services. And Sherry, we've been talking a lot about, you know, prioritizing ourselves, how to be positive, but sometimes it really is just a struggle. Those mental health barriers are hard to overcome. So what should you be looking for within yourself to know that it's time to seek support and help? Right. It's important to understand we all need strong support systems. We're social creatures. We all need other people to get through life. You don't have to be strong all the time. You don't have to go it alone, like we like to say at the village. Um, and you don't have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Um, if somebody asks you if you they, you could use help, accept that help. Um, talk to somebody who you know is a good listener. And then in terms of seeking professional help, if, if you've been feeling persistently sad, for two weeks or more, um, if those feelings are interfering with your daily life and your behaviors, if you're isolating, um, and obviously we're all social distancing, but if you find yourself distancing yourself emotionally from other people or engaging in unhealthy behaviors, reach out to a professional. You know, at the village, we're offering counseling via telehealth. People have responded really well to that. They find it to be effective and convenient. And what are some ways we talked about a little bit earlier, but some ways that you can prioritize your your uh, mental health? How do you take care of yourself? What does self-care look like? Self-care is refilling that cup that you use to to serve other people. And so doing behaviors um, that are healthy for you, like exercising, eating right and getting enough sleep and then also doing things that you enjoy and you find fulfilling, whether it's visiting with a friend um, practicing your spiritual beliefs, mindfulness, meditation, journaling, doing a craft activity that you enjoy, um, and, and making sure that with our work at home, at home arrangements, we're finding that separation and that balance in our lives. A hard topic, but definitely an important talk, topic to talk about, not only during this time, but just to bring it uh, aware that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So be checking in with yourself even more throughout this month too. Some very good advice. Abby Furchner reporting live. Thank you very much. Many people are going through tough times during this COVID-19 pandemic, and that's inspiring others to step up and lend a helping hand. One family is challenging you to join in. NDSU's head men's basketball coach David Richmond and his family are donating $2,000 to the YWCA Emergency Shelter and they're challenging the community to match their efforts. They want you to sponsor one night of shelter for $44 to help women and children escaping violence and homelessness. I just was 
uh, profusely thankful uh, and at the same time not surprised uh, having known Dave Richmond um, most of my life. What I've learned through everything is to become a better version of myself, I need to help serve. And I have, I, we, my family, we have no chance to do anything in life by ourselves. And the better that we can make people around us, the better that our lives are going to be. If you want to donate, we do have links on the VNL News app. Just find this story. Face masks are an important way to keep the coronavirus from spreading, but they may be irritating our skin. In our Healthier Me this morning, dermatologists say to pay attention to the fabric you're using. If you're prone to acne, avoid polyester because it can trap the sweat underneath and try a more absorbent material like cotton. People with sensitive skin should use a soft fabric for the inner layer with a thicker weave on the outside. And if your skin is dry, apply some moisturizer first. But if you have oily skin, avoid makeup or products that are thick and greasy. Let's get that answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Here is today's question. Three out of five of us are doing this less during the pandemic. What is it? The answer? Well, the answer is wasting food. Yeah, you don't want to waste that. You don't want to go to the grocery store as often. So hopefully we can continue that after the pandemic as well. But thank you for tuning in to the Valley today this morning. We want to reassure you that we are working hard to make sure you are staying informed during this COVID-19 pandemic. There are several ways for you to do that, including valleynewslive.com, the VNL News app, or also the Valley News Live Facebook page. Those are all for free with no registration required. Meanwhile, the Today Show and CBS This Morning, they're just about to start. But the Valley Today, it rolls on. We have more live up-to-the-minute news and weather coming up right after this break on the Fargo CW.